growing and going global. Tips on how to tap into the international marketplace. And ways to enhance the quality of your attendees. Welcome to IAEE TV, produced by Convention News Television. I'm Ed Hyland. Global business continues to grow. UFI's 12th Global Barometer Survey found that overall, in 2013, growth is still occurring for most companies worldwide. These results are in line with U.S.-based Sears findings that indicated slight overall growth for the industry in 2013. Some other facts of interest? 63% of UFI's respondents say that the economic crisis impact on their business won't be over until 2015. But in the meantime, companies are planning new strategic developments with 75% planning new activities in either the classic range of exhibition activities or in live or virtual events. And 49% are planning to expand exhibition operations to new countries. Meeting planners in the U.S. are taking note of this global growth. The SHOT Show held in Las Vegas was able to increase their attendance by reaching out to the international market and focusing on the quality of attendees. Here's a closer look at how they made their show a more valuable experience. I'm Rachel Kopchak for IAEE TV, and I am here at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas, and I am joined now by Deidre Colley and Chris Stolnack, and we're going to talk about how you guys managed to grow your attendance here at the show. Let's start with you, Deidre. You guys went after the international market and really brought in a lot more people. How did you do that? We um, participated in the International Buyer Program for the first time for SHOT Show. And what that does is it gives us the power of the U.S. Department of Commerce and all of their branches to bring in qualified buyers from a retail perspective. And we've been, we've been working on improving our international attendance over the last three years. But the IVP program has really helped us jump that number and we're very happy with the attendance that we've had so far this year. Right. But how do you overcome the language barrier? You've got a lot of different languages being spoken here. How do you help those attendees? We have a VIP lounge set up for them. We have interpreters. We have people who can walk the floor with them and help them interact with the exhibitors. Um, we also have the IVP staff here, the Department of Commerce staff here, and they're helping us match buyers with the right exhibitors as well. And Chris, you guys also really wanted to focus on the quality of people you are bringing in here, the quality of the attendees, not just the quantity. So how did you do that? Well, first thing we did was we went and we asked all of our buyers to resubmit their qualifications, their sales tax license, their federal firearms license, so that we could really weed out consumers who were getting into the show, the tire kickers, if you will, from qualified buyers. But while the process isn't uh, isn't necessarily easy, once you explain it to your customers why you're doing it, most of them are on board and very cooperative. And we had over 65,000 attendees on day one, um, eclipsing last year by almost 3,000, so it's working. It is. It is. Well, great. Thank you both so much for sharing your tips and advice. We appreciate it. For IAE TV, I'm Rachel Kopchak. Tapping into the international market may seem a bit foreign for some meeting planners, but there are several resources to help you out. IEEE TV's Sarah Solomon is here with a more in-depth look. Joining me now is founder of La Cita, Rick Still. Now, we are here to talk global. Great, Sarah. Now, your show has had very good success with bringing international attendees in. Yep. Now, what advice can you offer to meeting planners here in the U.S. on how they can really build up their international attendee base and exhibitor base? You know, international is, is what the United States is all about. Um, we're a country of immigrants, and it, it's a very natural extension to go into the international market, but a lot of folks pull back from that. I think, first of all, the long-term commitment to embrace it. The second one is you, you find out who your natural partners are. Uh, you know the industries, uh, you know the makeup in the other, other regions, and it really becomes a commitment of, of building those bridges and beginning the dialogue. Now that's really great advice, and part of that is kind of stepping out of your comfort zone. Yep. Um, now for those you know meeting planners here in the U.S. that are looking to tap into the global market and take their event overseas, what advice can you offer them to kind of ease into that transition? You know, you've got some really great partners, and a lot of guys know this already, with the U.S. Foreign Commercial Service and the folks that work out of the embassy. They, they do a really great job. In addition to that, you've got a network of Visit USA committees in, in all the major markets whose specific job is to devote resources to, to increasing travel to the U.S. 
not just leisure travel, but especially commercial and technical travel. Um, finally, the guys in the embassies frequently are organizing groups of guys in these countries to attend these events as missions. Now, some guys know that. Some guys are, have been using it. But for those that, that have been, to expand that presence in the marketplace, there's some really great potential relationships with wholesalers and tour operators in those markets to develop packages specifically to move attendees up. Honestly, if you speak English and or Spanish, you can essentially do business in 80% of the world. You hit on some great points, Rick. Thank you so much for joining us. What a pleasure, Sarah. Thank you. Sure. Back to you. IAEE is even expanding its role in the international sector by adding the International Excellence Award to its program. It will recognize an individual and or organization making exceptional strides in creating, launching, and managing an international event in the exhibitions and events industry. Nominations must be received by March 10th. The award will be given out at IMEX Frankfurt this May in Frankfurt, Germany. For more information on submissions, click on the International Award tab on the IAEE.com homepage. Feel free to share this video with your colleagues to keep them up to date. On behalf of Convention News Television, I'm Ed Hyland. Thanks for watching IAEE TV.